Welcome aboard and prepare to set sail with the greatest pirates in the Caribbean. Time to go. Dead Man's Chest is the second installment in the wildly successful Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. And a lot went down behind the scenes. From the crazy stunts and many challenges of filming on location, to the awesome visual effects that made pirate legends a reality. Given the fact that I'm, you know, playing a man who has a beard that can play the organ. Pulling off the iconic monstrosity that is Davy Jones required an equally unique approach to the visual effects. Industrial Light and Magic's John Knoll and his crew invented an entirely new process for doing motion capture, which allowed actor Bill Nighy to perform the role on set with the rest of the cast, instead of by himself on an empty blue screen soundstage. Noel and his team were then able to build Davy Jones and his tentacles completely off of Nike's spectacular performance, with all his little quirks included. And yet not so fortunate as to find land. <laughs> the terrifying Kraken wasn't initially very scary for the actors on the set, probably because director Gore Verbinski was standing in for it. And he's like, you know, be afraid, I'm a tentacle, and you go, ah. But eventually, the legendary sea monster was brought to life through a mix of both practical and visual effects. In the scene where the Kraken crushes the ship, the crew used a combination of explosives and two huge pipes filled with 30,000 pounds of cement to pull off the actual crushing, and afterward replace them with the CG tentacles in the final cut. And I don't think it's cracking anyways. Always heard it said Kraken. Making a movie in the Caribbean is a bit tougher than you might think. The entire crew had to get all their shots in order to travel to the tropical film location. I hate shots, I really do. Oh, I don't like needles. The production filmed in St. Vincent, the Exumas, the Grand Bahamas, and the tiny island of Dominica, where they dealt with torrential downpours and extreme heat and humidity. They also happened to be shooting during one of the biggest hurricane seasons on record. Choppy waters forced them to shut down countless times, and at one point, the entire production had to evacuate in order to avoid avoid Hurricane Wilma. I can't help it if your standards are lax. You smell funny. Jack. Huh. A lot goes into the look of a character as interesting as Jack Sparrow. Jack's skull teeth were bonded onto Johnny Depp's real ones by a dentist before filming began. However, some of the gold teeth in the back are actually real replacements. There's a couple of these are mine. These ones towards the back are belong to me. Depp got the idea of having different things in his hair from Rolling Stones guitarist Keith Richards, who was a huge inspiration for the character. Another notable accessory, Sparrow's striped sash from the first movie, had actually been lost. So the wardrobe department tracked down the mountain villagers in Turkey who wove the original and had them churn out another 100 yards of the sash. Bolicky licky. If you think Jack's normal look is wild, wait till you see his getup as the god of a cannibal tribe. Sparrow's clever face paint design was an idea that Gore Verbinski and the makeup team came up with on the day of the scene. However, the toe necklace was Depp's idea and was molded and sculpted from spare materials on set. Sparrow's fluffy scepter was actually a prop that was brought to set by a visiting friend of Depp's, who ended up making two more for the production. You do know Will taught me how to handle a sword. Having missed out on sword fights in the first film, Kira Knightley made up for it by getting all the sword fights she could handle in Dead Man's Chest. Knightley took to the sword very quickly, never failing to get the choreography on the first try. Not only did she pretty much do all Elizabeth's sword fights herself, she also outdid her fellow castmates, and even earned the respect of the stunt team. <laughs> Easily one of the more creative sword fights ever filmed, the three-way duel started on the Disney lot where the stunt team worked out the choreography in a metal wheel, fashioned with hidden handles and handrails. On set, the wheel was rigged to a truck and pulled through the jungle with the actors harnessed inside. As awesome as it looked, the actors did not recommend the experience. Uh, I wouldn't right try that, huh? When it came time for Jack Sparrow's fateful showdown with the Kraken, some elements were a little more real than others. Specifically, the monster's, uh, spit. The spit in question was made of concentrated saline and blown out of a bucket by an industrial-sized fan onto poor Mr. Death. After it had been tested on his stand-in, of course. You can safely assume it wasn't Death's favorite gag. 
the foulness of just living in it is wrong. Altogether wrong. If there was ever a scene that could outweird a three-way sword fight in a rolling wheel, the bone cage sequence might have pulled it off. In order to get some authentic performances, the actors were strapped in and literally rolled down a hill, swung from a crane, and at one point, Gore Verbinski had them carry the cage and run with it themselves. This is the last day in Dominica and Gore is just trying to punish us. <laughs> That's what it is. The actors may have had a rough day, but the dummies had it even worse. When it comes to filming locations for pirates, the more obscure, the better. Verbinski and cinematographer Darius Wolfski found Tita Gorge while looking through a Dominica tourist brochure and thought it would be the perfect spot to end the bone cage chase. Actors and crew filmed while in freezing cold water that was several feet deep, and they had to literally swim to location, including the 67-year-old actor who played Cotton, David Bailey. The pirate life isn't easy, huh? Funny way to get to the office, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have guessed that the open ocean would be so hard to shoot on? While well, the crew had particular trouble getting boats to stay in place, so Gore Verbinski could get the shots he wanted. You know, right when you line it up, everything moves. Everything's... We're going to the fishing boat. Constantly in flux. With four background boats and numerous floating light rigs to keep in place in moving water, it was a big challenge to get everything in frame. One shoot night went 17 hours without getting a single take. This again went to another level of filmmaking. For the filming of the sword fight on a tiny little sandbar in the middle of the ocean, all the crew and equipment still needed to be nearby. That meant putting the entire production on a barge, with a 20 minute boat ride to and from set. It was no cakewalk for the actors either. The sand there was super wet thanks to the tide, making it very difficult to run and fight across the beach for take after take after take. There's no one there. <laughs> Johnny Depp stayed in character even when he flubbed his lines. And much like Jack Sparrow, Depp was the source of numerous comical moments on set. At one point, he even forgot the name of the notorious Davy Jones' ship. Crocodile machine or whatever it's called. What's the bloody thing called? <laughs> Flying what? Dutchman. <laughs> but he was also very helpful to his fellow cast. Seems like it's always a good time when Jack Sparrow's around. Sorry. When it comes to a crew the size of a small army, you can never have enough snacks. Actor Jack Davenport, who played the Commodore James Norrington, was a bit surprised to learn just how much of the budget was going to the munchies. I remember saying to craft services chef one day, what is your budget for all this? He looked at me square in the eye and said, essentially unlimited. I was like, what does that mean? He was like, I don't know, two million? I was like, for snacks? And he was like, yeah. Safe to say, no one went hungry on this production. It's time to feed. When The Curse of the Black Pearl was made, there were no plans for any sequels. So while filming for her next movie, Domino, Kira Knightley chopped off her actual hair for the part, assuming she wouldn't be reprising Elizabeth Swan. But when the sequels were announced, Knightley had nothing for the pirate's hair and makeup team to work with. So in Dead Man's Chest, Miss Swan's long locks are, in fact, hair extensions. After rousing success of the first movie, Disney decided to shoot the next two films, Dead Man's Chest and At World's End, simultaneously. That decision resulted in production having over 200 shoot days in total. Does spending more than half a year on set in the Caribbean sound like paradise or torture? Let us know in the comments!